Hey everyone, Mike from Just Watch back with another review. Apologies for being away for a bit. I was actually knocked down and out with the flu last week. And uh, man, if you live in the U.S. and you've managed to avoid this year's flu season, good for you. Because I tell you, it's uh, it really takes its toll. It's you know not the worst kind of flu, but it just wipes you out. So that's what uh, that's where I've been over the last week and a half or so, and that's why you haven't seen any new videos. So very glad to be back with you guys and providing new content and talking watches again. And you can hear it, my voice a little bit. So forgive me for that. If I have to stop and take a sip of my coffee here, <laughs> I might do that as well. So uh, please bear with me if I do that. So let's talk about these two watches. So our last video we did series, uh, Seiko Seri 57, uh, which is this gorgeous stainless watch that you see right here. Please go back one video and check that out. Uh, you can see uh, all of the great things that we, we talked about this watch and uh, why it, I think it was a very strong buy from Seiko at this price point. And in the review, I asked if you guys wanted to see it compared to uh, Seiko's very popular Saab series. Uh, they offer two versions on this watch. They offer offer the Saab 35, which is the cream dial as seen here in the video. And they offer the Saab 33, which has a black dial. I think the 33, just from what I see online, is a little bit more popular. Uh, I only went with the cream because I wanted to mix up my repertoire a little bit, so to speak, where I already had the black dial on the Seri 57. So let's talk about this watch and what you're getting on the Saab 35. So just like the Seri 57, you're getting a 10 atmosphere water resistant, non-screw down crown, it does have a signed Seiko crown, so they both have a very similar signed Seiko crown. Uh, both watches have a sapphire crystal on the front and Seiko's Harlex crystal on the back. Actually, let's open that deployment clasp there. So you're getting Harlex on the back, Seiko's proprietary, uh, really good hard class, and the sapphire on the front uh, on both watches. Uh, dimensions on the watches are a bit different. Um, you're getting... On the Seri 57, you're getting a 41 millimeter case diameter, excluding the crown. You're getting a 49 millimeter lug to lug, and you're getting 11.4 millimeter depth. On the Saab 35, a bit smaller. So you're getting a 38 millimeter diameter, excluding the crown again. You're getting 44 millimeter lug to lug, so quite a bit shorter lug to lug, even though they wear. Uh, pretty similar, and I'll tell you why in a second, and 11.2 millimeter depth. So just a little bit different on the depth, 0.2 um, millimeter depth difference. Like I said, both non-screw down crown. Uh, at first I thought they were the same crown because they look pretty similar, but you can see when you, when you hold both up, you can see how much different that is as far as your how much that sticks out of the, and I don't think that's just a matter of how much it sticks out of the case. I do think they are two different crowns. Yeah, it's a much flatter profile uh, crown. Definitely doesn't have the same height as the Seri on the Sarb. So the Sarb is a little bit smaller crown altogether. It does have the same Seiko signing though on, on the end of both. So as I said, great class on both watches. You're getting a sapphire, a crystal on the front, on both and the Harlex on the back. And I don't think that there's any AR coating on this. The reason I say that is twofold. First of all, I haven't been able to see that telltale blue reflection that you kind of get, you know, when you turn it like this on either watch. And also, um, you don't notice it as much on this watch because of the white dial, but you really pick it up with the black dial watch. So you have a gloss black dial. It's a gorgeous dial as we said in our preview, actually. Get the smudgy smudge off there. Uh, so you have a gorgeous dial here on the on the Seri 57, uh, but that black dial also gives you a lot of reflection. And like I said, you don't really see any of that blue that you're looking for with the AR coating, but you sure can see uh, a great reflection on this watch. You probably even see the foam and maybe even, yeah, you can see me in the background here. So it's like a mirror depending on the light conditions uh, with that dial in that glass combination. Uh, weight watch, weight on both watches, uh, they're within 25 grams of each other, 136 grams on the Saab, 157 grams on the Seri. That is, of course, with the full-length bracelet as it comes out of the box from the dealer. So let's talk about this 
uh, the movement on these watches a little bit too. They do have different movements. So you're getting Seiko's really well-known, uh, great reputation, 6R15 movement on the Saab 35. Let's give you a look at the case back there. I think I have some overlays I can put in too so you can get a better look. So it has a bit of a decoration to it. You can see that machine work on the, on the counterweight. So really nice, pretty movement. I appreciate seeing it through that Harlex crystal. Uh, 6R15 movement on this watch. Uh, most of the 6R15s that I've tested over the last three months or so have been running in the five to eight second fast range. Um, this one is running at about a second and a half fast per day, which I think is fantastic. Um, so that is your, your movement on this. So uh, it is a hand wind and hack. Uh, the 6R15 is a 23 joule. As you can see, uh, the complication is date only on this watch as opposed to your day date uh, 4R36 movement that you get on the Seri. Uh, so same movement that you're getting in the turtle line. Everybody, almost everybody knows Seiko's turtle line. Uh, so you're getting that same 4R36 for the day date uh, complication. Both watches feature a three hand set, very similar profile to the hands. Uh, you're getting a Lumabrite on the Saab 35 hands, also a Lumabrite at the counterbalance of the second hand and on the inside, see if we can show you there, on the inside of the index markers. It's a really neat looking watch at night. I'll, I'll lay in a shot of the, uh, uh, a still shot that I did of the watch at night so you can see what it looks like uh, when it is in the dark too. 50 hour power reserve is really good as is your 1.5 seconds or so fast per day. So your 4R36 movement, it is a 24 joule movement. Interestingly enough, it's a cheaper movement, but you have more joules. Um, it has a 41 hour power reserve, so nine less hour power reserve. And you can see it's not as decorated, a little bit more plain Jane than what you're getting with the 6R15. Still very nice movement though, very nice looking. Something I enjoy seeing back there. I really like how they give you that little bit of a gold color on the counterbalance. So really nice there. And this one actually is running better than any turtle I've ever owned. Uh, this is running under two seconds a day fast. So both watches, I think this one's about 1.8. Uh, and as I said, with the Saab 35, it's running at about 1.5. I did check power reserve on both too. Uh, so 41 hour power reserve on the Sari and 50, power, 50 hour power reserve on the Saab. Uh, and they're both running very close to that too. So very much within specs on that. Let's talk a little bit about the fit and finish on the, on the Saab 35 here too. I think the, the way that they did the case is really cool. Let's pop that into focus there. So you see how they machined almost like a step down. So you have the brushed finish there on the top. Get that in focus better for you. And there you go. You can really see that step down. And then also the brush finish on the top of the case perfectly matches your end links and the top of the bracelet. It gives you the look all the way around. So you get that step down and it steps down to a polished finish, also a polished uh, bezel. There you can see that really well. And a polished case back going down to the Harlex crystal. Uh, the bracelet fits the head perfectly. There's no real gaps at all. Just really nice job by Seiko there. And you can see that they did a little bit of a machine thing. So it, it snuggles up to that case side and just gives you a really nice look. Uh, the way it kind of gives like a, so you get the step down here on the lug and then you also have kind of the step down from the bezel to the bracelet. So just a really nice looking uh, combination between your dial, your, your uh, chapter ring with the hash marks, your, your stick markers, uh, and then the bracelet. The bracelets are a little bit different between the two. You know, first blush, they're both, you know, kind of oyster style bracelets, but you can see, you can really see it there. See how flat your links are on the Sari as opposed to the rounded out nature of the Sarb. You know, I'll give you a look on the profile on these. So there's your side profile. You can see it's a very nice, it's a solid, uh, pin and collar style bracelet uh, with a flat profile. And then if you look at the Sarb, you can see just a little bit more round. So it's a, just a nicer finish. Also a pin and collar style. So do be careful if you're sizing these, make sure you're in a nice well-lit area and you're working on a flat surface with a pad underneath you. Uh, the collars are really, really tiny and uh, 
definitely want to run and hide from you if you're not careful. So uh, if you haven't done one before and you want to attempt sizing one, there's some good videos on YouTube, and I might do one eventually on how to do it too. Um, but definitely watch the video. Uh, the other big difference between the, the two bracelets, you can see that nice machine clasp on the Sarb as compared to what you're getting on the Sari, which is stamped. Still very nice. I mean, nothing at all wrong with that. There's, you know, a lot of watches that are a lot more expensive than this that use a class similar to this. And I'm not going to name any brands here. So both uh, deployments are the same. It's a, it's a signed, so you got a signed Seiko twin trigger deployment on both bracelets. So very similar. Uh, I think this one goes down to an 18 where it starts at a 20. That's the Sarb. I think this one, the Seri bracelet goes down to a 20 where it starts out as a 22. So that's your, your big difference there too. So just give you a, a quick look on this video too. So you don't have that step down. Let's back that up a little bit so you can see it better. If you guys own Oakley sunglasses, they make fantastic polishing cloths. <laughs> so you see that? So you have the, the brushed finish on the top of the lug down to that really nice on the on the on the shoulder there that polish and then also polish there so you can see how sharp those lines are i'm not sure if it's zeratsu but you know i've seen a lot of zeratsu that's very close to this so um, i think it's pretty close and they did an equally good job matching up the links uh, on this watch to the case it is a very similar step down thing from the bezel to the uh, solid end link and then you can see how just nicely that matches on both sides so really nice job uh, on both uh, bracelets from Seiko I do prefer the clasp on the Sarb a little bit more uh, but there's also something I don't like about both clasps too uh, that we're going to talk about in a second and that's in the con so what didn't we like about these two watches so obviously you're getting uh, both watches are uh, you know super high quality materials uh, sapphire and hard legs, stainless steel uh, machine work is fantastic on both watches. Uh, so the cons on both, they both have the same flaw. And I don't think it's major. I do think it's minor. And it's interesting because both bracelets are different, but they both have the same flaw. And it's twofold. First of all, you only have two position adjustments. So it doesn't give you enough adjustment if you're in between link size. So sometimes for some people aren't going to get a proper fit of the watch. You're going to have to wear it either a tiny bit loose or a tiny bit tight. Uh, just because you don't get, you know, if you're like me, it doesn't happen on the Sarb, it happens on the Seri. I'm between link sizes enough that I had to choose to wear it a tiny bit loose. And I'll give you a wrist shot in a second. Uh, so that's one problem. Both watches have that same uh, two position only adjustment. So there it is on the Seri. And then the other thing that they both share too is see that end gap right there? Now it looks, to be fair, it looks a lot worse on video than it does when you're looking at the watch on your wrist. So you can see that big gap there that you get underneath the clasp. And I'll show it to you on the Sarb as well. I don't think it's quite as noticeable on the Sarb because of the rounded nature of the links. Um, so come around there, get our focus in. And you can see it. You can really see it from the side. You see, I don't think it's quite as noticeable. Um, so there's your, there's your, your one flaw that I find with both watches is lack of adjustability and also, of course, uh, that little bit of a gap that you get down there on the bracelet. Um, what would I like to see on these watches? So I think both watches are fantastic. I mean, we're talking a watch where the full retail is, you know, the $450 price range. Uh, you can buy them all day long, and I'll provide uh, some screenshots so you can see. Uh, from Google searches. You can buy these watches all day long for, you know, under $350 retail, uh, whether it's eBay or, you know, depending on the country you live in, Amazon or what have you. Um, you know, both watches are 10 atmosphere water resistant, which I think is more than enough considering, you know, the style of the watch and, you know, the intention of the watch. Um, both watches keep very good time, have very good movements, are going to be very durable. Um, I do like the size better on the uh, Seri 57, but what I don't like about the Seri 57, see how much that lug turns down? I don't like that. I wish it had a bit of a flatter profile similar to what you get with, you know, a lot of other brands, whether it's Rolex, Omega, Tudor, uh, you know, even some other Seikos, 
don't turn down that much. And you can see it's not as apparent. I don't know if it's because of the size difference. It's not as apparent on the Sarb. Um, so that's the one other thing I don't like about the Sarah is how much that turns down. Um, improvements that I like to see on both watches, I would like to see a screw down crown. And actually, everybody right now is talking about, you know, Basel World predictions and what have you. I'm going to talk about a watch that I would love to see uh, Seiko make. I would love to see them make a Sarb like this in a 39 or 40 millimeter size with a screw down crown and just a little bit different not as dressy handset. So whether it's the uh, cathedral style handset that's on the Sarb 17 or something just a little bit chunkier, you know, some, you know, in line with, you know, what is on maybe like kind of a scaled down version of what's on the Marine Master. I think that would be really awesome. Of course, not as chunky as what's on the Marine Master, but, you know, not going down to that needle like you get with uh, the Sarb here. I think it's a great looking handset on both watches. Um, and I do like that you get the loom better on the Sarb. Uh, that's just me, but like I said, I don't think that's a deal breaker either way. So if I choose, if I, were, if I had you know a $350 budget and I loved both watches, but I had to pick between one, I think I would go with the Sarb and live with it being a tiny bit smaller than my preferred watch size. For me, um, my sweet spot is in the 40 to 43 millimeter range, <coughs> excuse me, where this watch is a 38. So it's a tiny bit small, uh, but you know, on the wrist, it's just not bad at all. Here, we'll give you a quick, uh, oh, actually, let's do a wrist check first too. So wrist check today uh, is a Tudor Black Bay Steel currently running on a black model on NATO. Really liking this watch so far. We're gonna have a full review on this soon, so stay tuned for that. Both look great on the wrist, no worries there. Like I said, I do prefer the profile on the Sarb a little bit more. Uh, so as far as if I had to choose between the two, I'd definitely go with the Sarb 35, even though it is a little bit smaller. You do get the 6R15 movement. Uh, both are running great in time though, and uh, I would highly recommend either watch. I mean, if, if you love the size, that 41 millimeter size better, and you don't care about the Luma Bright, and you're like, hey, 6R15, 4R36, whatever, uh, definitely go for the Seri. You're not going to be unhappy. By the way, the white dial version of the Seri 57 is the Seri 55. And then the black dial version on the Sarb is the Sarb 33. No idea why they do 33, 35, 55, 57. It'd be cool if Seiko kind of just made their naming uniform as far as with the dial color and what have you. Uh, but that's that. So everyone, that's it for this comparison. Thank you for checking this video out. I'm super happy to have everyone along. And thank you everyone for uh, subscribing to date. And if, like I said, if you do like this content, please do consider subscribing. Uh, we greatly appreciate everyone having coming along and also contributing down below in the comments. Also, if you're looking for a smoking deal on a Seiko watch, uh, my friend Mimo at MimosJewelry.com is continuing the deal through the end of March. If you use the code Mike35, he will give you 35% off any in-stock Seiko that retails on his website for less than $795. I will provide you a link to his website and also uh, give you an overlay of his page. You can see uh, he has a great selection of uh, some of the Prospects dive watches. So you can get a smoking deal on a Samurai or a Turtle. Uh, and you're also getting the advantage of getting it from a U.S. authorized dealer. So if you are in the USA, that is important. Uh, you know, you're avoiding some of the gray matter, or the gray matter, <laughs> some of the, the gray market issues that you have there. Uh, so do check that out. Like I said, I'll put the link in the profile. Everyone, thank you for checking out this review. Again, I greatly appreciate uh, all of the comments, likes, shares, and please do subscribe if you are new to the channel. Everyone, thank you for checking out again. And that is it for now. We will be back sooner uh, than later as we're feeling better now. And thanks again for checking us out. Bye-bye.